of tutorials I will try to explain to you how you can actually install and do spatial data analysis in Geoda. Um, to do this I would um, recommend you to if you haven't already done so install the new version of Geoda. The latest release is Geoda 1.12 and I must say that it's quite an upgrade from what I had used a couple of years ago. The version is very thorough, user-friendly and complete. It had sort of a complete revamp of the different bug fixes and different analytical techniques that the previous versions had. And to, to start using it basically, just follow the link below in the <clears throat> video description and download Geoda either for Windows or Mac or for Linux, depending which operation system you're using. The operating system that I'm presently working on, as you might see, is a Mac. And I like the entire running feel of the Mac for, for the Geoda software package. So to start the tutorials, you should go to data, uh, sorry, to documentation. And in documentation, you will have the Geoda workbook that in the past was sort of a PDF file which you had to, to download and you would have to take it step by step. And I like the entire feel that Jack actually can do it nowadays completely on um, as an HTML file. So it's all online and you just have to follow the different steps. So Dr. Luke Anselin has done a terrific job in in putting this in a more user-friendly fashion. And I just love the way it's organized. So I'll start right away with Geoda Workbook um, Spatial Data Handling. And we just click on that link and you'll see that it actually was updated a couple of weeks ago. So to start working with it we will be using different data and um, the way this first tutorial is geared it, it actually uses open data from Chicago. So what you'll do is you'll just open that link it takes you to City of Chicago open data portal and you will search within this uh, link in service requests and in service requests you will look for abandoned vehicles which is the link over here press on this link and download the CSV file okay once you've downloaded the CSV file you have the first data set that you're going to be using for your um, your location analysis and the first set actually corresponds to importing different data sets and um, working with the attribute table. So you have the entire set of objectives here which you can read as well. So you'll learn how to select tool, select tool, do set spatial selection, spatial aggregation, joining tables, <clears throat> and finally with the data set that you downloaded, create a basic core plot map. So several Geoda functions will be covered and I like the way it actually gives you an overview of what functions you might expect to have covered over the tutorials which is pretty handy. So we've already downloaded our data set we went to the abandoned vehicles and we have our CSV file which you have as a result of the download. We have saved it to our um, folder or on the desktop. I'm presently just working from the desktop I find it easier for the tutorials. So once you've done that, you will start loading the data. That's basically your first step in the Geoda, um, in the Geoda tutorial. Um, so first thing you have to do is connect to a data source. To do so, you just open up this button over here with the little folder. Oh, sorry, I had a project open so I'll do that again so you just press the folder to open and you can establish a data connection so the way you do a data connection actually pertains with just dragging the file and dropping it over here where it says drop files here pretty easy one of the things that you will notice right away is that when you when you actually enter the file you can do the, the CSV configuration and you will see that you'll have the column name and I'll just open that up a bit here. So you have the column name here and you've got the data type. So as you probably notice is that the creation date 
is not actually a pair with what um, what data type you might have because it's a date and you will have a string here so we gotta change this so that it becomes uh, easier to read but anyways for now let's discard this and just press OK and it will load the data into the system there it is and you have the entire data set which is pretty much a large data set corresponding to 176,864 entries of abandoned vehicle complaints in Chicago and you, you might notice that they are actually um, provided the creation and completion date so it is interesting that this data set actually works in time it starts somewhere in 2011 and it ends in 2017 so during this first tutorial what we are actually interested in doing is sorting the data that's of interest for us and to do that we, we actually have to change them the table and the edit table variable properties so we can actually recognize this creation date as a, a date and not as a string as it currently pertains so to do that we can go to and we should go to table and in table choose edit variable properties and you will notice that in the edit variable properties there is there would be there is date okay but the thing is that if you choose date in this in this in this part over here it is not necessarily correctly recognized reason being that the date itself is in a different format we are actually using for this specific date format month day and um, year so we have to tell Geoda to incorporate that date style and to do that we have actually to change something in the definitions so we go to in Geoda to preferences here Geoda preferences and you can change the date sort sorry the data source and in the data source you will ensure that you have a last column sorry the last information in the line separated with a comma which has percentage m percentage slash percentage d and slash percentage y so that will give us um, not only the definition of that we had before but it creates an additional time date time format namely with month <clears throat> day and year okay so once we've done that we can press close and let's close this data source again and um, we will just go again to table and in table edit variable properties and choose date okay and just close that and you will see that if you look at our table now this is actually considered a date so we have creation date and you might also look again at the different at the different um, at the different variables so let's look at the different variables the other ones are pretty straightforward it's string let's keep it as it is and and just let's let's uh, put the completion date as well as date all right so we have date now for all of our variables well, uh, for actually for creation date and completion date which is what we wanted to do and we can now sort of do more interesting calculations and um, with date time properties so as you notice that that is that basis is pretty big and we don't want to have all of the data um, using it so we just want to look at a specific month so to do that we will we will actually do some calculations to do calculations go to the um, add variable button I like to search sometimes the, var the thing the function I want to use so I can just go to add variable or I could go to table and choose within the table add variable 
So for that variable, we want to have a variable called year. So we would have only the year in which it was, in which our uh, abandoned vehicle complaint was filed. We keep it as an integer, and um, we will yeah we can insert it before the creation date. Okay, so we've got the variable called year. And with that variable, what we want to do now is go to a calculator, so we go to table, calculator, and we can do some calculations here. So we want to do date time calculations, so choose uh, in the tab here, choose date and time, choose year, and choose get year. So you could add different information, so you could go like get month, get day, get hour, minute, and second, but we want to get the year specifically in that column and we'll choose the year of um, 2000 and choose the creation date as the, 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 the variable that we want to have changed for getting the year. So just click apply and close and you will see that you have now your year um, column right here and we shall do the same thing with month because the idea is that we will select a given year and a given month within the threshold of an entire data set uh, that we are interested in looking at. So let's just do the same process over again, but this time for adding a variable called month and to find it as integer. Let's insert before year. Sounds good. We could always change location by just dragging it over here. So if I wanted to change it after year, I just go press it and drag it over afterwards and I have month over here. And again, I go to calculator, so table, calculator, and in calculator I choose month. I'm still at date and time. By default, it opens up where I last was. So date and time calculations. My operator this time is going to be get month, and I'm going to choose as well my creation date um, for the get month output. So I click apply and close, and here I have all the different months where actually um, the um, vehicle abandonment complaint was filed. Good. That allows me now to create a selection, and I can just go to right here in search selection tool. I don't believe that, that this is possible on a Mac, uh, on a PC, but but anyways, if you're working on a Mac, I, I find it usually pretty handy. Um, the location where it is is actually in table, and in table go to selection tool. And in selection tool, you want to create a, a new selection first. So we are interested in finding all of the cars first that are from 2016. So to do that, you'll just go to selection variable year and we'll choose select a range from 2016 to 2016 and we'll fill out 2016 here and we'll just write and choose select all in range okay so immediately right here from the total of our 176,000 whatever uh, rows we have selected now only 32,828 Cool. So what we want to do now is within that selection, however, we want to get a selection where the month was September. So we can choose to use select from current selection and this time we go to month and in month we go and choose from 9, which would be September, to 9 and we do the same thing over, select all in range and we have now a selection of 2,637 rows. You should obtain 2,637 entries that pertain the year 2006 and um, the month of the September, so 9th. And you can just close this window over here and you want to save your selection to a new database file. So just go to File save selected as make sure that you choose save selected as otherwise you will save the entire file uh, over again and end file path the first thing that happens if you press in a folder is you can choose the format you want to have 
So we want to have it as a DBF file and we call it vehicles DBF. All right, so once you have vehicles DBF, click on save and we do not want to create a new project for now, so just press OK. And we can change the names to the names that we find more convenient. And I'll just follow the, the same names that we have here in our in our um, Geoda tutorial. Because sometimes the names are a little bit difficult to to understand and to relate to. So creation DT. We'll just open that a bit wider here. Complete. And then we have service and O type license make color activity action days mark address zip code x y police d and com all right so we've changed our field names and as you can see we actually didn't keep any of the suggested field names and we changed something that we can clearly understand what it means. So once you've done that, just press OK and it should save the data. You save the data. Once you save the data, you can just, you know, just close this uh, project file, this database file. We won't need that one anymore. So do you want to save your data? No, we've already saved it. And let's just open up again the uh, new selection that we've just created. So let's go to here, open, and again, we can just drag the newly created file over, drop files, and you'll see that you have only now 2,637 registers um, pertaining your selections. We have only that database with uh, the month of September in the year 2016. Great.